Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Atheist Alliance International Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Sylvester. This week we're joined by an Afghani atheist activist and blogger who goes by the handle Dexter Morgan. So for his safety and for the safety of his family that are still in Afghanistan, he is using an avatar to protect his identity along with the, the pseudonym of, of Dexter Morgan uh, just for keeping keeping seeing symbol i'll switch to my avatar as well just because uh he's going to be doing most of the talking so it's just a little bit easier uh to have both of us on avatar rather than just one of us talking and listening and the other one uh is is just a, a picture of dex so just before we get started I'd like to remind everybody to please hit that like and subscribe button and we will turn it over to dexter morgan so dexter thank you for joining us today um, hello, uh, Jason. Um, um, I'm very much uh, delighted uh, to be at the same platform with you. Uh, it is a pleasure. Yeah. So, so thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to be in this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's a little bit of a cold, so uh, please excuse me for that. So, so maybe just to tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Um, and uh, a little bit about what, how you grew up, what your beliefs were, uh, how you got out of Afghanistan, some of the trouble you got into them. So just, just give us a, a quick bio. Of course, of course, why not? Um, yeah, uh, I, I spent 25 years of my life uh, being a Muslim, a practicing Muslim. And then uh, when I started to read uh, 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 Quran in my own language and I realized that things are not as it is told to us and then you know uh, in my own language I read it and that's how I became atheist uh, so I used to uh, criticize Islam on my social media accounts such as Facebook uh, openly uh, I used to talk with youths and I even I used to run a, a youths empowerment program uh, through a local radio station. Um, I used to write different newspaper, uh, two different newspapers, um, including to AAI, uh, which on its Secular World magazine, uh, on its October 2018 edition, I wrote an article there, and it, it, it's still there. Uh, it's on page 10 and 11, and it goes by the name Daz Islam Breach Jihad. So, um, yeah, with all these um, activities back in Afghanistan, so people around me knew that I was an atheist and that I openly criticized Islam. Um, it went on until 2021, uh, the year which no one was expecting the government to fall. And when it did, um, uh, I was, as I said, I was active on, on, on social media, on Facebook. I was a member of lots of, you know, um atheism uh, page uh, so uh, on the uh, atheist republic page i wrote my last post saying that hey friends uh, this might be my last post because you know the government has fallen and i may not make out of it and then uh, that was then i received a private message from troy troy garnell saying that uh, he could help me escape the situation um this was the starting point of our friendship with Troy, and this is how our friendship and bond started. So uh, during those uh, very tense moments that I was dealing with situations of life and death, um, Troy helped me uh, to, to overcome those situations because he has expertise in those kinds of emergency situations where, you know, uh, he really, really assisted me and... Uh, and hiding and changing places on frequent basis so um yeah so these things went on for a for a while and then uh, i tried to even board uh, on those planes uh leaving kabul airport uh i i, I nearly got killed uh, on, on on the blast that happened at the airport i was there i was injured 
uh, yeah so i was lucky to have uh, utilized expertise of troy uh, at those moments so as i said i used to change locations frequently after that uh, blast uh, and troy uh, kept me advising uh, and then uh, he said uh, he will sponsor me uh, for, an, for, for, for a refugee uh, humanitarian protection in Australia. So yeah, he sponsored me and lodged an application. So um, a year went on and then uh, finally uh, uh, we were called for an uh, interview uh, in, in Pakistan. So yeah, during that one year, things got worse for me when uh, I received uh, calls from uh, the Taliban uh, uh, General Directorate of Intelligence, GDI, uh, indicating and saying and insisting that they knew that I was an apostate and that I preached things that went against Islam and Allah. So I was summoned twice there. I was questioned, uh, which of course, uh, uh, both times I denied everything. So, uh, yeah. Um, I told uh, I, I reported these back to Troy, uh, and then uh, uh, along came the secular rescue guys from Center for Inquiry, and then I was granted a Pakistan visa in 24 hours and left Afghanistan during the night. Uh, and I arrived in Pakistan. I stayed there for about one year. Uh, got my family from Afghanistan into Pakistan, then uh, attended the Australian embassy interview, got the visas, and fled to Australia and now we are here safe uh but still my mom and brothers they are they are uh, there in afghanistan um i at the moment i'm writing uh a, a piece of article on my journey how i made it out of afghanistan to australia and what were the ups and downs so as soon as it is, it is finalized and finished i will share share that with you guys yeah this is the uh, uh, sum up of what I went through, uh, but not in details, but this actually sums up everything pretty well. So if you ask me about what I am doing at the moment and what I used to do back in Afghanistan, yeah. Now, uh, we, the free thinker generations of Afghanistan, have a YouTube channel uh, with 8.79k members and sub subscribers, a library in Telegram uh, with uh, 3.2k members, TikTok channels, Clubhouse channels, YouTube live streamings uh, that goes on and on. So we have at least um, three live TikTok and Clubhouse sessions every week criticizing Islam and its ideology and the adverse effects that the this ideology has on the uh, on, on our communities uh, with a hundred percent afghan audience uh, we also have a website ex muslims with a z dot org where uh, uh, myself and my friends uh, we uh, publish our articles we put their books for people to read and to have access to when at, at the moment in afghanistan they don't have access to those kinds of books over to you, Jason. Yeah, so just going to say, please, uh, please make sure uh, uh, in our uh, offline tonight, there are those links with me. Uh, if anybody who's looking, uh, please look in the description of this video. You'll be able to find those links to the, the various channels uh, that Dexter just mentioned. So especially if you are uh, an Afghan atheist or have Afghan friends who, who need some, some, some help and support, uh, please check out those links. So um so you you were able to get out this was this was shortly after the the taliban retook uh afghanistan so my 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 timeline of, of what happened is a little bit uh out of date so i know i know the taliban took over fairly quickly so you you were sort of in that scramble uh after they took over to get out true yeah i was there so when on the 15th august 2021 when the government fell down and when the cobble fell down so i was there and you know uh no one was expecting actually for the government to collapse with all those uh, uh specialized army and soldiers defending and then then in a blink of an eye 
um, the Kabul government, everything fell down and the president fled the country. And that's where we were left, you know, uh, with lots of hopes and everything. Uh, and, and, and not only me, but lots of, you know, interpreters, lots of bloggers, lots of atheists, lots of uh, marginalized community members. Yeah, they were all left there alone. Uh, and uh, uh, lots of them, you know, uh, lost their lives. Uh, lots of them uh, were captured like you know social media activists human rights activists women rights activists uh they were all locked up inside uh they were targeted yeah after that so 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 i could have i could have ended with the same fate if it was not for troy and his expertise that he provided me during the the, the situation yeah over to you jason so the, the those people so you were mentioning you were you were interrogated so you said you were you were known as an atheist uh, before. So during your interrogation with the with the intelligence, how, how did you how were you able to convince them that uh, that you weren't an atheist, or, or how did you manage to uh, to to fudge your way out? Well, um, after the. Uh after 15th of August, I closed everything, the social media, everything. Um, I, I closed my, all my accounts and then, you know, uh, started to uh, grow a beard and then uh, act uh, like a Muslim, attending the prayers and everything. So it's, it was a camouflage of things. Uh, yeah, uh, so when they when they called me and they said that you are you know you are an atheist and that you are preaching against Allah and Islam, so I was in a total uh, denial situation. And I just I said maybe the person reported me has some kind of personal grudge against me. This is not the person that they are reporting. So basically, uh, what went was that they started to asking Islamic questions, which I which I am very acquainted with at the moment that I'm speaking and, and, and at the same time that I was being questioned. So I said, I started to read Quran and I started to recite everything, the hadiths and everything. They said, you are a Muslim. I said, that's it. Uh, I'm a Muslim. So whoever has reported me must have a personal grudge against me. Uh, and that's how uh, they, they um, uh, let me go the first time. And they said that uh, I should not leave the Kabul premises unless uh, prior notification to them that I'm leaving uh, Kabul uh, for another province uh, or even out of Kabul city. So yeah, uh, when they uh, called for the second time, uh, I was like, you know, now I will be, you know, uh, sentenced, I will be persecuted. But again, this time uh, they said that they have more reports confirming that I was an atheist. Again, I started to, you know, uh, deny everything. And I said, hey, if I was an atheist, I wouldn't be here twice. So this is how I was taught by Troy, just to confront them, not to escape from them, unless we have a visa for me to just get out of Afghanistan. So after the second time, uh, yeah, then um, after I, I was granted the Pakistan visa, then I left Afghanistan uh, during night. Uh, this is this is what happened. And I, I, I was in total denial, denial uh, situation, uh, Jason. Over to you. So to why you were being interrogated like i would imagine that that must have been a very very existentially frightening experience so how were you able to keep your cool and and like you said you you kind of instead of trying to run to to confront and argue back so how how did you manage to keep your composure when you must have been in a very frightening situation well, actually, it was, you know, I hope it doesn't come to anyone on this planet Earth because the situation that I was in, even my wife, uh, she didn't know that I was going uh, through these kinds of situations. Only my one, one of my brothers knew, uh, not not even my mom, because if I if I told them that I was being interrogated, they would just, you know, uh, their heart would stop because we knew that when someone ended up uh, being with them so so yeah probably imprisonment uh and worse persecution so yeah i i i didn't tell anyone just it was myself my brother and troy so uh yeah we um I, we made we made out of those harsh and tense uh situation i had no choice i had no choice so so 
they had control everywhere they were watching everything so yeah i had no choice other than to confront them um, but it was a tense uh, moment and tense situation and tense seconds and minutes for me uh jason so when excuse me so then you said when you you escaped you so you went into pakistan and then from pakistan you were you were able to get get out correct yeah uh i went to pakistan stayed there for a year almost a year 11 months uh, and so then uh we were granted our visa and then we fled pakistan so what what were you doing in pakistan like were you, were you there as a as an asylum seeker or you because you had a visa to go to pakistan so what what, what were you doing in pakistan to survive uh well uh in pakistan uh, i had a friend uh, who booked me um, a hotel in my uh, initial weeks uh, and initial months in Pakistan and not under my name but under his name so that I'm not identified uh, yeah and then uh, after two months of staying in Peshawar uh, I moved to Islamabad uh, the capital and that's where I felt a bit you know relief that I am you know uh, not uh, in danger anymore i used not i used to stay within the house boundaries uh, I, I i tried my very best not to get out of the house and in pakistan um, while while uh, uh, we were in pakistan my family came after two months um we were just staying there and uh, we were just surviving it was a survival uh, months and days for us so uh, nothing in particular I was doing, just uh, reading books, uh, making sure that the kids, they enjoy their time uh, while in, in Pakistan. So, so that's, that's what we did. I, I bribed, mm -hmm. the, I bribed, I remember I bribed more than five times the Pakistani officials just, so, just to make sure that they, are, they stay away from our house. Uh, yeah, so these, uh, there were lots of ups and downs in Pakistan, so 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 yeah, I cannot discuss the details, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. yeah, we survived. Yeah, but the, the so the officials must have known you were there then if they were if they came looking for bribes. Um, and not only me, but um, other Afghans who stayed there in Pakistan. The Pakistani officials they were just looking for an excuse to get money out of afghan afghan people pockets that was it uh, yeah. uh, while in pakistan i also made sure that i i do not open my facebook account or my twitter account everything that stays very very confidential and that i should not open them uh, and when my wife came in pakistan i told my wife that hey we cannot go back to afghanistan again and this is the case and she she was like oh my gosh so yeah I, I i told her that we can't go back to afghanistan so whatever happens we stay here and we make we make out of here to any country uh so hopefully yeah we ended up um in one of the best uh, countries and cities of the world in melbourne australia and that was through mostly through troy because troy's based based in australia of so it's, yeah. of course okay. of course and we 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 give our thanks to troy uh for for the help he's done troy's been on the podcast uh but about a year or two ago we had troy on talking about uh, some of the work he does so uh we'll put a link here as well for, if anybody's interested in 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 seeing the interview with troy um and and what uh some of the work he does to help help people around the world like like getting Dexter out of afghanistan so yeah there's there's so there's quite a, a large uh afghan uh, refugee uh, population in Pakistan. Um, so you said you, like, you you tried to stay out of the house, but obviously the officials knew. So presumably, then you you know you you had a little bit of money saved up that uh, you know you were living in hotels. Uh, you were able to pay bribes, or it's not like you were destitute. Like you know you just left everything behind and and were, were like living in a refugee camp. You, it sounds like you had a, a little bit better situation than than some of the other people who who've crossed into Pakistan. 
Of course, yeah. Uh, we left everything behind, including my house, including my car, including everything, the, 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 every particle of the life that we, myself and my wife, we, we built. We left everything. And, and, and when we arrived in Pakistan, especially when my family arrived in Pakistan, they were just, you know, themselves and, uh, and only uh, one or two clothes. That's what they, it. Yeah, what they yeah. can carry, yeah. Yeah yeah so during uh, our stay in pakistan uh, my family they didn't have uh, passports so we bribed everyone to get our passports and we we sold everything including car including fridge everything even my wife's um saved goods we had to sell them just to make sure that we get our passports and we did uh, and and after that we fled uh, uh, to to australia okay so that was, that was good then at least you were so through through yeah. proxies in afghanistan you were able to sell some of your belongings and get the money so that's that's good at least you weren't completely stranded so well, you, you would just so if your family came into pakistan they didn't they didn't with their, with their, with their, with their passports at the time when they came sorry come again uh please jason you, you mentioned you didn't have any sports but you said you had a visa for for pakistan so the rest yeah. of your family they they were smuggled into pakistan they didn't come in on a visa like you no they didn't come on a visa like me uh they they crossed the border illegally uh, so the friend that i told you that i had in pakistan he helped uh, get my family uh cross the border illegally we bribed everyone at the border and then we had my family in Quetta and from Quetta to Islamabad, uh, that's a 17 hour drive. So yeah, so, so, so um, I was there in Islamabad. Uh, my friend told me that I should stay there until he gets my family back to Islamabad safely. And uh, on the way to Islamabad, my wife says he bribed three times the officials. And when my family arrived, and then we started bribing the officials every month or so, just to make sure that hey we my family is here they are without visas and everything and then this is the money so just just leave us alone you know yeah <laughs> all right so yeah. just just a housekeeping question so if she knew she was coming to pakistan why wouldn't she have brought her passport with her or she didn't have she did not have a passport because she was a woman in afghanistan so she just didn't have one to begin with uh, she didn't she uh, my family except me my family uh, because um, i used to travel uh, frequently from afghanistan to to foreign countries uh due to my uh work and research uh, so i had a passport uh but my family including my kids and my wife they didn't have a passport so at that at okay. that time okay. yeah yeah so 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 they had to enter pakistan illegally uh just to make sure that they attend the uh australian embassy interview uh, so we attended and after that, when the deadline was given that any Afghan without any passport residing in Pakistan should leave Pakistan before 1st November. Um, uh, yeah, and that was when uh, we we were completely, you know, hopeless because we had our IMI cards, we had our visas granted from, from Australian government, but still due to not having passports, we were not able to get exit permits from Pakistan so the exit permits it was a big issue and then uh, again um, we bribed everyone back in afghanistan uh, and then um, we got our passports my family went to afghanistan stayed there a week and then came back again to pakistan with their passports and visa this time yeah and then that's how we exited pakistan without passports it was almost impossible right. for my family right. to make, make it out of pakistan yeah so what, how did you get passports for them? Are they uh, presumably the Taliban's not going to issue passports to to refugees who who fled their their clutches? So how, how did you get a passport? I mean, or was it a, a foreign, a third party nation that granted a passport? Yeah, yeah, there was a third party involved. Uh, 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 I can't expose the names and everything, but yeah, there yeah, was yeah. A third party involved who made sure that. Uh, be, that, that that yeah um, each passport uh, costing around 1400 usd he will get uh, so yeah so that's how we bribed we paid 1400 usd per passport to for afghan officials inside afghanistan just to get the passports yeah 
Yeah. And it was in a blink of an eye, you know, Jason, when we when we paid the price. When you are at the queue and when you want a passport, it is impossible to get. But when you bribe the officials, it's just a matter of a week. So that's what yeah. happened to us as well. Yeah. Yeah, just for some of our, our viewers who who might be somewhat insulated, you know, like living in the West and, and haven't traveled uh Corruption in, in some of the poorer countries in Asia is off the charts. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, you know, frequent, frequent viewers of this channel will know I actually lived in Pakistan. Uh, I worked there in, in 2018. Um, you know, I, I saw the, <laughs> the cops, you know, uh, just one, one example, I, you know, just sitting at, at a red light um, and there was a, a, a police van. Uh, sorry, a police pickup truck with maybe six or seven Karachi um, cops, and uh, all these motorbikes are just—they're just running the red lights, and they're doing it right in front of these six cops. They're just sitting there doing nothing. So, yeah, it's uh, the, the the cops in a lot of these countries have their handouts. You know, like oh, oh, you, oh you're a foreigner, you're not wearing a helmet. Okay, you know, hundred dollar bribe. So, yeah, it's. The, the corruption is is pretty endemic in these countries um you know kind of like they call it like the brown envelope culture like you know you want something from a, a government official whether it's a passport or a marriage license uh or visa whatever you know you, you slip a little cash in a brown envelope to the official um you know and, and so magically things things start happening so yeah i'm i'm familiar with that from my own yeah. experience yeah because 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 it doesn't matter the 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 um on the contrary the um the uh, surveys indicate that the uh, a community or a country uh the more religious the more corrupted and and that's one of the reasons uh i don't believe in, in any religion uh, i came to a conclusion that religions cannot be true and and that's one of them so in back in pakistan uh uh, we were going to a hotel one night. I told the kids, "Hey, kids, just yeah, there's a Turkish restaurant. We can have a our dinner there." And then we were heading to the to the restaurant, and then uh, we were stopped. We were asked for passports and and and, and everything. We said we, we don't have one. And uh, you know what? The the the, the guy says uh, we were we were discussing the amount of the bribe. So I, I said I have. Uh, I can't pay you more than 2000 uh, pkr uh, pakistani rupees and he was like no 5000 i said okay 3000 what he was saying was that hey give me that 3000 because i am missing the prayer time so here he is discussing me the uh, uh, he is bribe he is taking a bribe and there one side of his head he is connected to allah and he wants to complete his prayer so my wife was hey do you also pray so so these are the things that happen in in, in, in religious countries uh, especially islam dominated countries yeah unfortunately and most so, of and them, yeah you mentioned your brother helped you and your wife is so they're obviously they were now you were an atheist you know you you said you were blogging before the the taliban retook afghanistan so your wife and your family were aware of your your atheist ideas and rulings or you you kind of kept that hidden from from most of your family uh no everyone uh knows that i'm an atheist including my brothers my mom my wife everyone around me okay it was an open yeah i had a library of around um, 1000 books in my home uh open to everyone so yeah everyone knew that i was an atheist and i didn't believe in any god or any religion yeah okay and was that causing any any upset with some of some of the family members who are maybe worried about your soul? Uh, well, um, I started to criticize Islam uh, starting from 2013, 11 years from now on, uh, 11 years before. But um, during this period, it is it is an inevitable part. It was an inevitable part of, and still it is an, an uh, inevitable part of my life that I lose keep losing friends, keep losing the close ones due to my uh, me being an atheist. But um, nonetheless, uh, I try just to keep to be a human being uh, respect respectful. Uh, so so yeah, uh, 
I lost I lost friends. I lost family members. Yeah. 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 But your, your mom and your wife, your brother are all, all supportive though. They, they didn't turn their backs on you or uh from within my family uh, no no one uh, opposed me uh except my wife when she sometimes told me can't you keep this to to, to yourself and to your kids to within our family why you have to do this this talking and everything back in afghanistan i used to invite friends over uh, and then discuss with them uh intellectualism and atheism and everything and ration, rationalism so my wife was like hey yeah you keep drinking that's fine with your friends but why can't you just stop <laughs> uh telling about uh, you being an atheist and why is atheism important and why is uh why is islam bad for the community i i, I still say to her that hey uh look we have to do this because um i cannot afford to see people you know um, having uh, unnecessary pain and suffering islam as an ideology is an unnecessary pain and suffering to every community it, it reaches so so as a human being um i i, I uh, on morality basis i just can't stop myself uh just to make sure that people are not suffering uh uh from from an uh, an unnecessary ideology like islam yeah right so uh, is your wife a, a believer or she's an atheist like you uh she's an atheist uh she's an atheist we have kids at the moment uh as a parent we have decided just to let the kids grow uh, and then when they are over 18 they can choose whatever they like but at the moment we 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 are both atheists and we don't practice islam anymore okay so that there's no tension there so many many of our viewers may be in a situation where they they have given up their faith but are still with a partner i i personally know quite a few people uh one of the people in my my local atheist uh community um former jehovah's witness uh yeah. who's an atheist but his wife is still a devout believer so but they're still together yeah you know they they just agree not i guess not to talk about it she's she's aware of of his lack of faith and the, you know they're still together still love each other but uh they just don't so i mean you know and everybody's situation is different like sometimes you have yeah. two atheists sometimes you have one so yeah so at least at least she's not traumatized by the fact that she's she's a believer in islam and and you know giving you belief all the time so that's it's good that you're both on the same yeah. page so. yeah things differ under uh, the, uh, uh under uh because the circumstances are different uh but ours were when, when we married to each other we were both practicing muslims and then I was the one, uh, the first one uh, that I uh, that I realized that uh, Islam is not true. And then I went to follow up other religions as well, uh, because uh, uh, it, it, you know, leaving the God and everything, all those expectations, all those rewards, it is frustrating to leave all those and face the reality. So um, yeah, I, in, in my entire eleven years of being with my wife, after I was an atheist. Uh, uh, I have never forced her to believe what I believe. Uh, I acted uh, as a normal person. Uh, I just discussed verses from Quran with her. And then uh, at the moment that I go live on TikTok and Clubhouse and uh, other social media platforms, she just sits beside me and she just listens to everything, uh, what I have to say and what others have to say. We have lots of debates every day and every week with mullahs and uh, with other Islamic preachers about Islam and morality and the Quran versus uh, the contradictions and everything. And she just listens. Yeah. Yeah. And we are fine. So, yeah. While she was listening, she became an atheist herself. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Eventually it was, uh, you know, uh, rationality pre uh, precedes everything uh, when it comes to rationality and religion. Rationality precedes. So, so that's a natural thing, a natural gift to us through evolution that uh, we are a rational being. Uh, otherwise taught by religious religion yeah so what you you were both practicing muslim so do you remember sort of what triggered your your journey down the path to, to atheism was was there like an aha moment or was there there's some event you saw some some brutal religious thing the taliban was doing and went like i can't support this or, or just a gradual sort of 
mental evolution? Maybe just tell us a little bit about how you, you went from being a practicing Muslim to an outspoken atheist in a, in a very dangerous country. Uh, well, Jason, uh, definitely at the starting point of uh, me being an atheist, I had my aha experience moments, lots of aha experiences. And uh, it happened through intuition, yeah. Uh, I was in Turkey, uh, I was studying there. And then there was a friend who had an uh, eyesight problem where he, uh, uh, meningitis, what we call it here. So he couldn't read books uh, when he started to read books, especially with very tiny words. Uh, then he got a um, headache. So he asked me for an excerpt of a book uh, that he had an exam for. I was studying Turkish language at that time. So he said, hey, you have time. Can you please uh, 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 take an excerpt or a summary of this book for me because it is too tiny and I can't read it. So um, I started to read this book because when, you, when someone tries to uh, summarize a book, uh, then he has to understand every word. So fortunately, and I'm very fond of that friend who is still a Muslim but helped me understand reality, um, I started to read every word, understand every word, and that was my aha experience moment. That, hey, uh, there are uh, lots of discussions going on beyond religious beliefs, and they're challenging. So why don't you take uh, this route as well? So it started there, and then uh, I read some of the um, uh, uh, Islamic uh, critics' books, uh, and I uh, ended up um in a in a blog where it would the all of the forbidden books uh, were published um it is an uh, iranian a uh, website uh and then i downloaded books from there and i started to read 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 and then i ended up with epicor and then with plato and socrates and and uh, aristotle and then i came back uh wittgenstein and then nietzsche and then you know um, russell uh so so this is how uh, things changed for me and i went to study the uh, theology as well uh, started from with Durant, uh, the history of philosophy and then you know ended up with his um uh, uh, uh lots of his books as well on philosophy uh yeah this is how how things uh uh, how things started and how things are going at the moment for me. So I went to India and then I followed up some um, Indian um, scholars who used to write books about atheism and about philosophy and everything. So I went to Hinduism as well, to Buddhism. Uh, several Pali Radha Krishnan books I, I, I purchased from India and then brought to Afghanistan, the idealist view of life, the philo Indian philosophy, uh, and then uh, uh, the Hindu view of life. These are the books that I uh, read from uh, Sarvu Pali Radha Krishna. And, and things, yeah, things started. It was a blur for me before, but now as I as I read, as I read and, I, and as I contemplate on things, yeah, things are getting very clear to me. Yeah. So, was, you, so for you, is much more of an intellectual atheist conversion, you know, reading all of these these works by some of the world's great thinkers help, help to to crystallize it for you yeah yeah it was like you know listening to debates of um late christopher hitchens uh, and then richard dawkins and then sam harris and then and then shelly keegan and everyone you know reading their books and and, and listening to their debates yeah it was um my family has a very very strict islamic background uh, including my father and mother but uh, it, uh, me um, uh, leaving islam or any other religion is not you know has has not any ties to you know being having a grudge against them or or like you know uh, isia is is isis or isis or taliban or any other uh, Boko haram or any other group doing this i, I have nothing to do with them it, it's just um, um following the rationality and that's it yeah yeah yeah, and everybody's journey is different as, as, as those of us watching this video, you know, their experience is different from, from others. Myself, I tend to to be on the intellectual atheist side as well. Um, I didn't read, I don't think, like you, I don't think I was reading a lot of that. It was part of my, my 
conversion is probably the wrong word. I don't I don't like the connotations of the word conversion, but my my enlightenment to atheism just kind of happened on its own, um, just over the course of of years. But it was sort of only after I I stopped believing that you know I I discovered you know the writings of Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris and and Christopher Hitchens, like you mentioned, the Four Horsemen with Dan Dennett. Um, yeah. So yeah, for me it was just it was kind of more. A, a, a mental evolution that I just kind of gave up my faith and then kind of got into reading the philosophers that you did. They, you know, they, they, they've played a role in, in cementing my atheism, but they weren't part of my sort of deconversion from, from belief. So, yeah, yeah everybody's, uh, everybody's journey is different. So, yeah, yeah. Everyone's story is different. Def definitely. Uh, but I can't deny uh, the important part that reading Quran in my own language had over rethinking about Islam and um, uh, and uh, understanding Islam and Quran from another perspective. Uh, I can't, I cannot just deny how um, uh, reading the Quran in my own language uh, helped me understand Islam better. Yeah, so so it was uh, like. Um, reading the passage from Quran in your own language. It is, it is reading, not reciting. So reciting is something that most people do when they have a, 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 a Quran in their hands. Uh, it's just Arabic. They don't understand what's in there. But reading uh, with a critical mind and, and a critical glass uh, in the eyes, uh, that's, that's you know, uh, um, how things, you know, started with Islam for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Russell. Russell's one of my favorite philosophers. I, I I tend to post quotes from him. You know, maybe once or twice a month. Uh, he's he's quite witty as well as quite insightful. So, um, yeah, uh, some of the some of the ones you've you've mentioned are interesting. So, um, you know, any any anybody who's interested, uh, you know, we in, we invite any of our listeners, you know, to to please. Please read. We have an intellectual atheism section on our blog. Um, some of some of it is my writing. Some of it is uh, other contributors in the past. Uh, we have mm -hmm. had one contributor uh, on how uh, it was evolution. Um, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've taken a look at his some of his writings. Uh, but yeah, we we encourage people. You know, reach out. You know, especially if you are if you're still in a situation where you're religious. But you're questioning you know there's resources available we have we have blogs we have the podcast we have many of our members uh who can share their stories so please you know don't feel like you're alone like the there's there's resources out there there's lots of books to read so yeah and they so. are definitely not alone and it is uh, i know that living one religion or becoming an atheist or just uh, in a blink of an eye, like I don't believe in any gods. It is, uh, it is in some word everything, but in some word nothing, because uh, yeah, uh, uh, it is like the start of atheism uh, is enlightenment, but that's just only the start. So, so people have to you know go through what their morality basis should be in a naturalistic view. Uh, just to avoid um, nihil uh, nihilism and just to avoid, you know, other um, other um, ideologies where, you know, there is uh, it creates tension and, and it imbalances uh, human beings. Maybe you know, drive them to suicide and, and everything like that. But if if they keep going, they will find definitely things that worth reading yeah, and that worth uh, uh, to live upon. You know, Jason, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any any parting thoughts you'd like to share as we, as we wrap up? Uh, uh, sorry, Jason, come again. Any any parting thoughts? Some some wisdom? You know, anybody who's gone through maybe some of the 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 Muslims and or ex Muslims uh, who might be looking for some advice. Any 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 anything you can offer them? Uh, well, uh, uh, what I tell 
what I offer is for for Muslims especially because we deal uh, I myself deal with Muslim community I urge them to read uh, 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 Quran in their own language in the language where they feel very comfortable reading the Quran with it doesn't matter if it is uh, 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 Persian or if it is Pashto or if it is uh, Uzbeki it doesn't matter so they have to just read uh, Quran in their own language not recite it because there are lots of things in there like you know uh, uh, when you when you so Muslims a Muslim cannot cherry pick from Quran like you know hey a says this and B says this so which one I choose no you have to choose both of them uh, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a contradiction or not because uh, in Surah Kalam um, verse number 50 uh, Allah says that um, uh, uh, our command is but single so it's a single command and uh, in Surah Nisa verse 150 uh, it says um, surely who surely those who disbelieve in Allah and his apostles desire to make a distinction between Allah and his apostles and say we believe in some and disbelieve in others and desire to take a course between this and that they are not allowed to do that if if a muslim is a muslim then he has to uh, accept quran as a whole package so and, and there is they can't change a word uh, and then um, we have also in surah maida uh, verse number 54 uh, 44 uh, where it says those who do not judge by what allah has sent down it is they who are the un who are the unbelievers so anyone who judges beyond what Allah has sent down, which is Quran, they are the unbelievers. So um, there are lots of contradictions in Quran. You, they just have to start reading it. Like, you know, in one verse, it says there is no compulsion in religion. But in, in another, in, in Surah Fat, uh, verse number 16, it says, kill them until they submit. Then if you obey, Allah will grant you a good reward. And if you turn back as you turn back before, he will punish you with a painful punishment. And in Surah Toba, um, verse number five, we have slain unbelievers wherever you find them and take them captives and besiege them and prepare for them each ambush. So these are the things, the contradictions in Quran, uh, which unless read in, 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 uh, in their own language, it is not possible. It is almost next to impossible to understand what says there. Uh, so this is what I have to um, say for for people who are listening especially muslims yeah jason okay well thank you for your your contributions uh, let me just turn my cam back on as we wrap up so thank you for your contributions and and coming on and sharing your story hopefully it uh, is inspirational for some of our members who might be whether they're muslim or in, in a fundamentalist christian or jewish family uh, uh any sort of fundamentalist situation that, that they're trying to get out of many of our members i'm sure uh have experience with, with what's that like and, and and what it's like to get out of a situation where you are a non-believer in, in a society a family a culture that's hyper religious so uh, we appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your story uh please uh our viewers check the description so dexter in our offline chat please send me the links to, to all your social media uh viewers you can find them in the description uh hopefully it will be helpful to you uh to to read what uh this uh, dexter and, and and the other bloggers are putting together and and hopefully it will be of use to you so we'd like to thank uh, everyone for watching we'd like to remind everyone please like and subscribe and dexter thank you very much for coming on and sharing your your brave story with us and uh, and good luck in your new life um, living uh, in a secular society thank you jason for the time dedicated for me uh as long as i live as long as i'm here and as long as i'm given every chance to speak i will keep speaking i will keep advocating for the rights of the minorities that are left in afghanistan at the moment i have a friend when his wife uh knew that he was an atheist uh, she divorced, divorced him. Now she uh, he is on the streets. So these things happen every day in Afghanistan, and not only in Afghanistan, but around the globe, where Islam and Sharia dominates. 
So as long as I uh, keep breathing and uh, I will advocate for their rights, and this is the starting point um, for those advocacy. And uh, I wholeheartedly thank uh, Troy. Uh, he's a champion of our lives. Uh, without him, it wouldn't be possible for us to make it to Australia and make it a safe haven. So yeah, yeah uh, uh, I will keep advocating for the rights of uh, atheists who are uh, still stuck in Afghanistan and around the globe. Uh, thank you for ATS Alliance International for giving me the chance. Um, back in 2018, 17, 18, and 19, where uh, I was in Afghanistan, I used to write them articles. So, yeah, uh, I, I thank them as well, uh, just to give me an opportunity to, uh, to raise my voice and concern from Afghanistan to the whole world that, hey, these are the things that are rooted in Islam. It is not ext extremism what uh, ISIS and Taliban are doing. They are just doing what the book says. So, uh, so yeah, I have lots of discuss discussions, lots of verses, lots of everything that Taliban at the moment doing in Afghanistan is tied to Quran. So starting from the uh, 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 restricting women to attend social uh, activities, starting from closing the beauty parlors, starting from closing down the schools to, to girls, everything is related to Islam and relevant to Islam. So there are verses in Quran where um, if not, uh, if I hadn't read it in my own language, I wouldn't have come to an understanding that this is what Islam is. So, uh, yeah, uh, again, I thank you and uh, it is Alliance International for giving me the chance to be here with you. And this is my pleasure, Jason. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah. Uh, as podcast host, I'm also the manager of the blog. So please submit if you've got some some articles. Uh, we're always looking for content for the blog, so please uh, send me some of your work and we'll create a profile for you and uh, start posting your stuff. Of course, why not? I have tons of articles, tons of things to, to discuss and to share with people regarding Islam. Yeah, I yeah definitely. great. Yes, yeah. and, and one, one other point I just I would like to make to our viewers, uh, please also find in the description there's a link to donate to Atheist Alliance International, our Atheist Support Network. Uh, could desperately use that money to help people like Dexter, uh, people who are fleeing oppression, who need who need asylum, who might need help with a passport or, or help with relocation expenses. Uh, that's one of the biggest outlays of, of uh, AAI's uh, cash flow uh, is the donations that come in from from members and viewers uh, that to, to go and support people, legal cases such as uh, uh, Mubarak Bala uh, in Africa, who's been in prison. Uh, we're helping with legal fees and support for his family. Uh, so please, if you can spare a little bit of money, please, please think about donating to ASN, uh, the Atheist Support Network and Atheist Alliance International, so we can use your donation to help the people who need to get out of these situations. So uh, just that's my Final thought uh, that we could use your help to, to help these people um, to get up. So great. So thank you very much, Dexter, for watching. Thanks uh, for joining. Thanks to the people who've watched. Uh, please do check out the links uh, to their content. Please check out the links to, to either join AS, uh, Atheist Lines International and, and or to donate. And uh, we'll see everybody on the next episode. Uh, so once again, Dexter, thanks for joining us. And take care, everybody. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you, have a, and have a nice day and the nights ahead, Jason. All right, take care, everybody. Okay, thanks for listening, and don't forget we're on YouTube, so follow us on YouTube. Just search for Atheist Alliance International, and please subscribe and hit that notification bell. We're also on all of your favorite podcast platforms, so make sure that you follow us on there as well. See you next time.